This is the craziest story ever. When this girl was six years old, she was at Dairy Queen with her mom and her brothers. Well, her mom had to change the baby's diaper. So she went up to a guy sitting by himself at one of the tables and she asked, hi, yeah, I have to go change my baby's diaper. Can you just watch my two kids for me, please? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's totally fine. The mom had seen this man around before, and he seemed nice, so she thought it was safe to leave her kids with him. She got done changing the baby's diaper, got the kids from this man, got their ice cream, and went home. Well, a few weeks later, they were watching the news. This just in, a child murderer has been arrested and charged with six counts of first-degree murder. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Turn it up, honey. His name is Brock Popovich, and this is what he looks like. That's right, the man that she left her kids with that day at Dairy Queen turned out to be a murderer. Needless to say, they all got very lucky that day. Hey Chad, what do you want, Kyle? I'm not in the mood today. I don't give a crap what mood you're in, buddy. I'm not your buddy, Kyle. Oh, I know. Remember what you did to me two years ago at that school dance? No. You pushed me on the ground, you forced me to eat six chocolate chip cookies, and you slapped me in the face with a piece of lunch meat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I just go now? No. You know what happens next, Chad. No. Yeah. Don't slap me. I have to. No. My mom saw you at the uh, pet store last night with your mom. Were you getting a goldfish? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna slap you so hard that your goldfish will feel it in his tank. <laughs> Hey bro, so I think I'm gonna ask Stacy to the dance. Bro, good for you, dude, you deserve it. But you might wanna act quick because look, no, they call me uh, Mr. Suave. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I, but I am suave though, I'm super suave. Let's just say I lift about, you know, 110 on a, on a good day. You know what, I'm going up there. Hey Stacy. oh hey Kyle, what are you doing? What are you doing here, loser? Stacy, quick question, Um, are you inflatable? No, why? Oh, did you hear that, Chad? She's not your type. I only bought one of those dolls and it was a joke. <laughs> yeah, right. You're just saying that in front of Stacy because you hate me. Oh, no, 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 I'm not saying I hate you. What I'm saying is if you were dying, I would unplug your life support to charge my phone. Stacy, you, me, dance, Friday? What do you say? I will see you there. <laughs> Bye, Stacy. Weird things people did as kids. When this girl was around six years old, she lived in England. And for some reason, she thought that the Queen of England installed tiny cameras in her bathroom to make sure she was being a proper lady while she used the facilities. So every time she used the bathroom, she made sure to sit up straight, fold the toilet paper neatly, and say, thank you, Miss Queen, after she had finished. Oh, what a weird kid, but hey, if I thought the queen was watching me poop, I'd have done the same thing. This person's dad is wild. When this kid was six years old, he went to the gas station with his father. They were very low on gas. So low, in fact, that the car ran out of gas right when they pulled up to the pump. When he got inside to pay, he realized, Oh my gosh, um, I forgot my wallet. Okay. The thing is, I ran out of gas, so I, I can't leave here. Dad? Hold on, buddy. Um, can you just put $20 on the pump? I'll, I'll fill it up. I'll be right back with the money, though. Okay, but how do I know that you're not just gonna take the free gas and never come back? Like, I'll leave my kid here, okay? I'll leave my kid here with you. I'll go get the money, come back, and I'll take my kid, all right? My kid is collateral. Dad, no. All right, fine, yeah. Okay, I'll be back. The dad eventually came back, but that kid wasn't sure for a second. He was stranded at this gas station with a strange man for over an hour. Needless to say, he was terrified. This school show and tell turned into a nightmare. It was about to be show and tell at this one elementary school, and this girl wanted to bring in something very cool. Well, she was playing in her backyard when she saw a spider. Oh my gosh, that's a really cool looking spider. <gasps> I'm gonna bring it in for show and tell. So she got a jar, put the spider in the jar, and the next day she brought it to school. All right, Kayla, it's your turn. What did you bring in for us today? It's a spider I found. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Hold on, let me just, uh, I'm gonna get the principal in here. The spider she brought in was a black widow spider, one of the most venomous spiders on the planet. When the principal got in the room to assess the situation, all right, so where is this uh, spider? <laughs> 
Kayla showed the principal the spider you brought in. So I actually started to feel bad for him. He seemed stressed out, so I let him free in the classroom. Um, okay, yep, everyone out of the classroom now. Come on, let's go. The school had to shut down for a few days while some exterminators searched for the spider. And then they killed it. This person had terrible luck. Years ago, this person broke his right foot. <laughs> Call an ambulance. My foot's broken. After going to the hospital and weeks of having his foot in a boot, he was leaving the last appointment at the orthopedics office with his boot off and his two feet healthy and free. Finally, he was walking to his car when he suddenly tripped. And believe it or not, he broke his other foot. <laughs> He had to go to the hospital, get his foot in a boot, and do this situation all over again. This is the weirdest kid ever. The person that shared this story said that there was a weird kid that went to their high school. It was a very big high school, more than 3,000 students. If anyone said anything to this kid that he didn't like, he would stare at you dead in the eyes and recite your address. Can you hurry up, Steven? I want to use the water fountain too. 4776 West Branch Avenue. Steven, no sleeping in class. 417 Billiards Lane. <laughs> Yo, Steven, nice hat, idiot. <laughs> Your parents are divorced, right? Yeah, why do you care? Your mom's house, 716 Burroughs Drive. Your dad's house, 524 Concrete Lane. <laughs> No one knows how he got these addresses, but he knew everyone's. After high school, no one ever saw him or heard from him ever again. Black Market's kids ran in their schools, a follower submission. When this kid was in fifth grade, him and his friend were hanging out outside when they came across a mysterious bush. This is what happened. Yo, Billy, come here, man. Hey, what's up, Reggie? You find that squirrel? Nah, look at this. It's berries. Yo, bro, eat one. Heck no, bro, I have a better idea. Get some Ziploc bags. Him and his friend then put as many berries as they could into Ziploc bags. They took them to school and sold them for a dollar a berry behind a baseball field fence. They made about $150, but they didn't realize until later that these berries could have been poisonous and students could have gotten very sick. <laughs> That's crazy. My favorite comebacks. Hey Chad, come here. Dude, I know Chad used to bully you, but you've been really hard on him the past few weeks. I don't care, Steven. Get out of my face. Kyle, I'm done with this, man. I don't want to deal with you anymore. You think I wanted to deal with you all those years? No, man. But what you're doing proves that you're no better than I am. You're the same as me. We're the same. <laughs> we are not the same. <laughs> hey, Chad, if your parents got divorced, would they just go back to being brother and sister? My parents aren't related, you idiot. Yeah, right. If you were any more inbred, you'd be a sandwich. <sighs> Speaking of sandwich, what'd you bring for lunch today? A sandwich? Well... I'm gonna slap you so hard that your sandwich will turn into a salad. Check your lunchbox. How did you do that? Black Market's kids ran in their schools. A follower submission. When this kid was in high school, he was in the auto shop class, where you learn how to fix and work on cars. Well, he was the teacher's best student and there was an extra bay in the shop. So the teacher allowed him to use that bay for his projects and his assignments. He then had an idea. He decided that he and his friends would open up an oil change and tire rotation business in the school's extra bay in that classroom. They serviced most of the teacher's cars and they would post their flyers around town and actual residents of the neighborhood would come in to get their cars serviced by them as well. They had somebody working the oil change station every day for from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And they were doing a ton of oil changes every single day. Because of this hustle, they made over $250,000 in three years and are now looking to start and open up their own garage. I can't believe this woman. The person that shared the story is a firefighter. And a couple of years ago, some lady called their fire station. She asked, I need you to come to my house and fill up my pool, please. Uh, ma'am, we do not do that. We are a fire department. Exactly, they're a fire department. Where does this woman get off? Anyway, she said, well, who am I supposed to call to get my pool filled up? You guys have the water trucks. I'm not sure who you can call, ma'am, but like I said, once again, we are a fire department and our fire trucks use our water for emergencies only. Not to fill up pools. Then, this incredibly entitled woman says this. Well, my taxes pay for your salary and those trucks, so you need to come fill up my pool 
now. Uh, no. Can you believe that? What a crazy, that woman needs a reality check. The dumbest ways people made money. This woman needed some extra money, so she went on Craigslist. She saw an ad that said, allow me to film you shaving your head. The pay, $600. I am definitely interested. She then met up with this dude in a parking lot somewhere and he filmed her shaving her head. And she made 600 bucks. Up next, this kid and his friend were 12 years old. They were walking to 7-Eleven when a car comes out of nowhere and hits his friend. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, are you okay? This kid's friend wasn't hurt at all. He wasn't even hit that hard, but this guy was tweaking. Don't call the cops, okay? Uh, what do you want? Anything, anything. Uh, 20 bucks? 20 bucks each. Okay, fine, yeah, um, here. 20 and 20, okay, we good? <laughs> Honestly, they should have asked for way more. When this kid was 10 years old, he lived next to this woman who had a pet parrot. This woman worked all the time, and the parrot was alone most of the day. Well, this lady was worried that her parrot was lonely and depressed. So she paid this 10-year-old kid 25 bucks every day after school to go into her house and read her parrot a story. And then the princess poisoned all of the elves in the city until they all died. I bet you like that story. This is the dumbest school rule ever. At this one middle school, there was this rule, and the rule was called the bubble. The rule was no students in the school were allowed to come within an arm's length of one another in the hallway for any reason. And if kids broke that rule, they would get in trouble. Wanna give your friend a high five? Detention. You wanna lend your friend a pencil in between classes? <laughs> Detention. Is your friend having a really bad day and you wanna give them a quick hug in the hallway? Extra detention with the possibility of suspension. Give me a break. The person that shared the story said that their physics teacher in high school was super cool, and you can eat food in class whenever you want. However, there was one item that you were never allowed to eat in that class. In this teacher's class, there were no bell peppers allowed in my class. If I catch you eating a bell pepper, it will be thrown away and I will send you to the principal's office. Now, if you break this rule multiple times, if I catch you eating bell peppers on multiple occasions, you will be suspended. Is that understood? Uh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, sir, who would bring a bell pepper to class? You have no idea. Students throughout the years asked him on multiple occasions why his hatred for bell peppers was so intense, and he never gave them a clear answer. That's crazy. 